2015, 7 p.m. without coming to order. Uh, I would like to make a couple announcements first. If you have a cell phone, if you please turn it off. If it don't vibrate, we appreciate it. We have another announcement. We have a celebrity in the house tonight. Mr. Joe Herdman has a birthday this evening. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joe. Let's give him a hand. Oh, you're still young. He's a young man. He's a young well, Lowell's the mayor, so he can just declare 35. <laughs> Take 10 years. <laughs> we appreciate it. Okay, may we have a uh, roll call now, please, if you would. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Graybacher? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. <laughs> I just want to see if you'd look up. All present. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Richard McIntosh. Fire, please. All stand. He's at the back of the room. If you would, we're going to turn around for the flag anyway, please. All right. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we understand in your word that we are told to trust in God with all our might. And Father, we understand how much we like an understanding and how much we do need to trust you. I pray for this council this evening as they join together in this meeting and they make decisions that affect many lives. I pray that the unseen spirit of God might touch the unseen spirit of men and women this evening, that they might find this burden of responsibility to be lighter as they look to you. I pray for their safety during this meeting, and I pray for their safety afterwards as they return home. And we we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. If you join me with the Pledge of Allegiance now, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, but I have action on the minutes of the regular meeting, January 5th, so 2015. Moved. Second. Mr. Craig Walker and Mr. Reynolds. Second by Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Discussion. Any discussion on the minutes? No, oh, sir, you do an excellent job. Thank you. Mr. Rick Lowry. Abstain due to absence. Mr. Craver. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Passed five, six to zero, one abstain. Thank you. Okay, we have communications tonight. We have Firefighter of the Year, Steve Trusty, and Officer of the Year, Dan Bowman. If we could go ahead, please, Chief. Appreciate it. We have someone to take pictures of the people, if you would. Okay, good. You're I'll do my best. I've had a full all day. So okay. Um, I come before you tonight to present the uh, Firefighter and Officer of the Year for 2014. The award selection was made through an online peer voting, allowing all department members to vote, and uh, both individuals were picked by their peers. Uh, our first award recipient is Steve Trusty. Steve, look. Steve started with the division in April of 2013. Steve retired from Wright Patterson Air Force Base Fire Department, where he was a firefighter and a fire inspector for 30 years. Steve was currently tasked with inspections and fire prevention education. Steve was appointed in 2014 as the department chaplain and as the lead of our critical incident debriefing team. Steve was the key element in acquiring the fire safety trailer from Mike Patterson Air Force Base for Fire Prevention Week 2014, which included two days of fire prevention education at the New Carlisle Elementary School. Steve never backed down from any project I assigned to him and was willing to share his knowledge base with the younger members of the division. And with that, I award the Firefighter of the 
Congrats to award recipient is Dan Bowman. Dan started with the division in November of 2012. Dan received a Firefighter of Horror Award in 2013 and was promoted to captain in 2014. Dan's career uh, has been spent in volunteer part-time and full-time departments, including the City of New York Fire Department. Dan was also a deputy sheriff for many years. Dan is currently tasked with the monumental task of fire, our fire training program and we're focusing on our back to basics fire fighting over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Dan is seen by his peers as a great mentor and teacher and is always willing to break down any subject to make it easy to learn. And with that, I will work. Officer of the Year, Dan Holmes. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it. Congratulations, both of you. Thank you so much for your service. We appreciate it. If you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome to. If you want to stick around, you, you can do that. Two of them are just white stools. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to uh, our city manager's report, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight, I'd like to start with the finance discussion and our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Jim, Mayor and Council, and I'm going to go over our December financial report. The total revenues we took in for the month of December was $549,304.99. Total expenses for the month of December was $732,436. The uh, year to date, uh, total revenue collected is $5,053,946.89. And the total year to date expended expenses is $5,018,142.37. Um, some of the, uh, the larger expenses in December were debt payments of over $200,000. Semi annual payment. I brought that up on the uh, end of the year a little fine. The income tax receipts for December was collected at $35,114.32 and our year-to-date income tax receipts were $962,216.73, a small decrease from this time last year. We did uh, estimate a $980,000 uh, income tax of so we plus dollars so we're pretty close on our estimate. So, if there's any questions, I... Council, any questions? Finance Director? Yes. Um, December 2014 total income tax receipts says a decrease over, you know, over the previous year by 13%. That's a big drop. Any idea why? Um, actually, it looks like um, I was trying to get a better um, toll from the tax administrator, but he was working on closing out his um, his books. I know that he did tell me that the withholdings were actually up for the year, but the business <coughs> income was, was down. Most of that decreases from business income. Um, mm -hmm. I can have more information at the, uh, the next council meeting. Oh, well. Sure. No one else. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Continuing the, the service discussion, Mr. Pitko. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. We just have uh, one quick item. It's been our ongoing uh, water meter upgrade project. Um, currently in the north section, which is north of Lake, we initially sent out 1,095 letters. We are down to 233 that are non-compliance. Uh, of those 233, we are currently um, trying to place uh, door knockers and get a hold of people because we are going to start setting people who are north of Lake now to a time limit and we will disconnect the water service for the meter. Uh, so for instance, we go out there, it could be five uh, days, depending on the calendar days or what we got going on. But we'll put a door knocker on there and, for instance, give five days. If we don't have an appointment set up uh, by that time, we will go out and disconnect water service until the meter is uh, changed out. South side of the lake is still going to be some time until we get to that point. 
but um, the south side of the lake had started four weeks later and they are at the same response rate so uh, that's good that's helping get this section done and uh, but that is all I have um, I can entertain any questions on this or any other service discussion Mr. Go, go ahead you want to be would you mind getting up and go going over to the podium please we need your name and your address please Moore, 301 North Church Street. Yeah, I called. Uh, Nancy, just one thing. I think it would be more appropriate if we held her for public comment. Well, it was just about the water, the, the meters. I Could called to have my meter switched out, and they said that they didn't have the parts to do it. So I don't want anybody to cut off my water if they won't come out to switch out the meters. Okay, that's, that's something that you could get a hold of Mr. Kickhill with, if you would, please. We appreciate it. I'll, I'll clarify that. Uh, yeah, if they've called you, because we do have some register onlys and some of the parts, they obviously won't because you've made your contact. Yeah. yeah you, you've made contact. These are people that have, we've sent three, four notices, plus another call to have contact. Yeah, you're good. Mrs. Dinkler, thank you for helping us here. I appreciate that very much. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Kitko, just on the same subject, are the uh, the buildings or the rental properties that have multiple units, like you know, you'll see them either side by side, six of them, do they just go and knock all those out at one time, or how's that going? Uh, typically, most landlords, like I think it's tomorrow or the next day, we have one landlord that has 24, wow. and they're going to spend the day and go as long as they can and try and hit them all that quick, but yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Because they're, they're taking probably time off their job also. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Kiko? That was a question I had also. The ones that you're not getting a response on, are they rentals? Is that the problem that we're having? More rentals or is it an owner situation? Uh, we haven't got down to that kind of detail, but that's what we're looking at. We're gonna, um, a few of those, probably 50 or so are probably vacant. Mm -hmm. But we're, uh, we're going to get to that detail because we know if we hang a door knocker on a rental, we usually sometimes don't get that same, or they don't pass it on to the uh, landlord. Okay. Thank you. Council, yes. John. Any uh, main problems? Uh, we, we went out and tested hydrants today, as a matter of fact. Our, our flows are up about 200,000. Um, so right now we think we have three or four main breaks that just are, uh, they have a surface, we just found them. Oh, yeah. The underground by listening to their art device. So they're going to be repaired before uh, we, before yeah, they surface. Yeah, we'll call the company out. I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks, uh, the guys that come out correlate them and they pinpoint them for us because they're not above ground. Okay. And then then we'll dig them where they mark X marks the spot. Treasure. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kirko. Continuing then with the planning and zoning discussion, our planning director, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, City Manager, City Manager, Ms. Jones. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Thompson, members of the public, I'd like to share with you uh, the December 2014 uh, Planning Department monthly report. The five complaints come through the office from the year-to-date total of 62. Uh, issued nine yellow tags slash verbal slash letter warnings. Uh, 19 of those bring their year-to-date total to 207. Two violation notices went out, bring your year-to-date total up to 127, excuse me, 49. Uh, zero grass violations for the month, and bring their total grass violations up to 127. We had six zoning permit applications come through the office, bring their year-to-date total up to 112. Uh, monthly compliance rates, yellow tags to violations was 90%. Nuisance violations to abatement set at a perfect 100%. Uh, some items I'd like to share with you. Uh, New Car Lot is open for business. Uh, the business of the month is Z Wireless, Verizon Wireless uh, Premium Retailers. They are located at 524 North Dayton Lakeview Road. It's the Lakeview Plaza Shopping Center right next to the uh, Z Wireless is one of the nation's largest Verizon Premium Retailers with more than 360 stores in 18 states. Z Wireless offers cell phones, Cell phone accessories, tablets, Bluetooth accessories, and speakers at appealing rates with great customer service. Their phone number is 937-679-9383 if you'd like some more information on the products that they uh, have. Um, before I jump down to the ordinance of the month, I did want to, just want to throw this in. Last week I was out a few times. I had a few citizens stop me um, regarding the 235 widening project that was completed a while ago. Uh, they were questioning me about why there was no business up there yet. Uh, I just want everybody to know that the ball is rolling with that. 
those things don't happen overnight. There's a lot of planning that goes into uh, a person uh, wanting to start or relocate to business. But just in case the citizens of New Carl are wondering what's going on with that, uh, those vacant parcels, uh, we are uh, trying to get those filled. Uh, moving on down to ordinance of the month, it is 660.05, which is duty to keep sidewalks repaired and clean. I thought it was appropriate for this time of year, and that ordinance simply reads, uh, under, it's under safety, sanitation, and health. The ordinance states that a municipal cor corporation can require that the owners and occupants of abutting lots of land shall keep their sidewalk, curb, and gutter in good repair and free from any snow or nuisance. So if there is snow on your sidewalk, it is your responsibility to stop that and get off the snow and ice off. Um, I think a couple months ago, I think Mr. Craybacher had asked me about some of these available uh, buildings that we have in the city of Utah no. and do we do anything with it? Well, we do now, and it's called Atlas One, and what that is is a statewide database, and basically how that works, if you are looking for a building, you would log on to the database and you put your search criteria in there, and whatever matches your search criteria would pop up. Uh, right now I have a few buildings from New Carlisle in there, including the Madison Street School. Uh, I still got a lot to go, but it is very um, time consuming to enter all the information. It is a pretty thorough application and ask you everything from your square footage to what kind of electricity you got, to how many dot cores you got, to how, how, how tall your ceilings are. So there's a lot of questions that need to be answered with each and every one, but the state of Ohio has found a lot of success with that. Hopefully it can follow us into here as well. Um, speaking of the farmer's market, we do need a farmer's market manager. And we also need uh, planning committee members. If you know of anyone or yourself that is interested in helping out this year, just give me a call at the city building. And that's 845-9492. Uh, Again, 845-9492. Uh, vacant housing report was not granted at the time of this uh, particular report. Uh, so as soon as I get that number, I will let you know. It's probably around our 72 to 74 average that we get every month. And uh, that's all I have, so I'll be happy to uh, entertain any questions. Questions? Yes. Mr. Bridge, just out of curiosity, is there anything to report on the old CVS building? I, I noticed, unless it happened to fall over, there's no for sale sign anymore. No, it's not. They actually, the, the, the company who owns it just contacted me about putting it for sale, re sign out front. Okay. Um, I know there's been a lot of rumors going around town and what's going to go in there, just as any other big building we have. Um, I have not had any commits come through uh, the office yet, so everything that you hear at this point time is probably still speculation. Thank you very much. Sure. Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, I just want to uh, say thank you for the work that, that you're doing to attract new business. I know having new business come into town helps us out when we have budget problems to create that extra revenue and extra tax base. So I want to thank you and the city manager and, and the mayor for starting the new Carlisle Oaks for Business proposal and also knowing what's what's happening with the 235 project and then also uh, to Mr. Kraybacher for getting the ball rolling and now that we're part of this Atlas One project or, or whatever it is, I think that'll be really good for or getting the word out on some of the properties and opportunities New Carlisle has for business. So I'm really pleased with what we can bring to the, in this new year, what businesses we can bring in by these different opportunities we have. So thanks for, for doing that. No, thank you for the comment. Just economic development is it's never a fast process. It's always a, like a very slow moving ball. But the other one also goes for big parts of the land too. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big building. So, you know, we are getting on it. Um, so yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, going on to our final discussion with Chief Phillips. Thank you, Mrs. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, citizens, and guests. The Nuclear Oil Fire Division responded to a combined total of 114 calls for service during the month of December 2014. Fire responses totaled 14 with an average response time of 8 minutes 52 seconds. The division responded to 100 medical calls for service with an average response time of 4 minutes. 52 seconds. In Elizabeth Township, the Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 15 calls for service during the month of December. Fire responses totaled six, and emergency and medical responses totaled nine. There were 13 responses into the uh, Township of Elizabeth, two into the city of New Carlisle. Uh, some significant events on 1226, uh, 4246 McCandless Road. Uh, there was a call for a structure fire. It ended up being wires burning inside of a residence that was handled by our crews 
relatively quickly with some uh, mutual aid help from Bethel, Miami. About the same time, there's another structure fire call at 5760 Tip Elizabeth. Uh, that was a chimney fire that spread into the actual structure of the building. Uh, our crews, along with Castown, Christiansburg, uh, New Carlisle, and uh, Bethel, Miami, worked for about five hours to extinguish that fire. We had to basically tear the brick, brick wall off the side of the house to find where the actual fire was at. So a good effort by everybody involved there. On 1228, uh, 3300 South Dake Lakeview Road, there's a pretty significant gas leak down by the bowling alley. We assisted uh, Bethel Clark uh, in uh, mitigating that situation. Uh, fortunately, they were able to get it uh, taken care of relatively quickly. And then on 1229, uh, 4418 McCandless Road, next door to the other McCandless address, there was a, another chimney fire. Uh, it actually ended up being the flue pipe on top of the house. It was the only part involved. We were able to mitigate that quickly with the Cast Town and Christian Park fire. Uh, so everything went well there. Uh, a little safety message there at the bottom. Uh, today is not really a good example since we're uh, 40 some degrees today, but uh, make sure if a fire hideout in front of your house or near your home is free of snow and ice. Uh, the plow drivers here in the city do a, a relatively good job about trying not to plow snow around the fire hydrants. But uh, if you do have a fire hydrant out in front of your house and you do see it's covered with snow, try to give us about uh, 24 inches or 36 inches or all the way around the hydrant so we can access it if there is a fire. And with that, I'll entertain any questions. Council, questions for Chief? I just have one. Equipment wise, are we all right? Everything's up and running. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your report. Continuing then with our police discussion, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Council, citizens of New Carlisle. In December, uh, reports taken by New Carlisle deputies, we had 33 county deputies with 26. That left us a total of 59 reports. They patrolled 3,197 miles, had 167 uh, miscellaneous calls, and did uh, seven follow-up investigations. Under traffic information, uh, we had 82 traffic stops, 58 citations was issued, then we had nine OBI arrests, there was 14 charges within those nine, and driving under suspension we had 15, parking citations 18, <coughs> non-injury accidents one, and injury accidents we had one. And the arrest information, criminal adult arrest we had six, criminal adult charges there was 11, juvenile arrest two with two charges, and we had three more arrests no warrants filed. And then we had two assaults, breaking and entering. We had four, theft six, vandalism one. We had 18 911 hangups, uh, no phone harassments, domestic violence with assault. We had two, domestic violence that were verbal was four. We had four lockouts. And we had 12 alarms and 60 assists. And I want to point out that um, one of our late night deputies uh, in December of 2014, Deputy Brian Beller, received the Miami Valley Crime Stoppers Law Enforcement Officer of the Year Award. Since Deputy Beller began serving the city of New Carlisle, he has taken a proactive and energetic approach to deterring, detecting, and apprehending criminals, as well as traffic offenders in the area of New Carlisle. He takes a genuine interest in his community, uh, he serves and he lives in. And he does a good job. Uh, numbers are someplace up around 80 again last year, 2014 for OBI, excuse me, OBI arrest. And starting in January the 1st, uh, Deputy Ken Majorsack was reassigned to Moorfield Township. Uh, he was one of our deputies up here uh, because of budget constraints in the city. And I just want to publicly thank Ken for his dedication to the city of New Carlisle and its citizens. Uh, for the short time he was up here to get a fine job. And with that, entertain any questions. Council? Yes. Um, you said that Ken Mad Magic, what, what, what was his name? Magic. Okay, that's close enough. <laughs> they left January 1st because of our budget restraints. Is that the reason he really left or because he really wanted to go to Moorfield? No, the reason he really left was the budget. The Moorfield Township position just happened to be open. But he did not want to leave the city. But um, 
there were tough times up here and he won, didn't want to take a chance and so he had an opportunity to be reassigned and that's what he took. Okay. Anyone else for sir? Thank you, Sergeant. We appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Continuing then under informational items, uh, board renewal, and I would like to suggest we do this a little different than we normally have in the past. Um, I, would, I would suggest that we start out with approving these by board. Any like what well, a couple of the boards have three people being renewed, and that way we'll need a motion and a vote for each board. So how did you want to start? I move we approve less than a crocker with a uh, civil service commission. Is that Yes, thank you. Second. Give me a second, fellas, so I can keep track of this. Motion by Mr. Zambach. You made the motion. <clears throat> Mr. Reynolds, a second? Uh, Bill, a second. second. You made the motion. This is going to test your skill, isn't it? So I have a motion by Mr. Zambach and a second by Mr. McIntyre. Correct. Right. And the motion is to uh, appoint Lestina Crockett to the Civil Service Commission. Yep. So let me ask you a question. Do we need to do each one separately like this and vote on it separately, or can we go down the list? And then vote on everyone or not vote on everyone. How, how would be the best way to handle it? It seems like it's going to take quite a bit of time to see. Well, I would suggest that you do them by uh, commission or board. It's, by, going take, it's going to take a little bit of time there. So do them individually. <clears throat> so we need to call for a vote, sir, if you will. Mr. Zambach. Yeah. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Now we need to go to the next person on the list. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, move to appoint uh, Terry Hoffman uh, to the Board of Human Rights. Second. No, I think someone beat me, but it's okay. Come on down there. I heard him first because the speed of sound travels quicker from here. <laughs> so I have a motion to appoint Terry Hoffman to the Human Rights Board. A motion by uh, Mr. Reynolds, second by Mr. Zanabon. Mr. Reynolds, please. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass seven to zero. We can go on to the next person, please. Mr. Mayor, uh, will we uh, appoint Salah Terry to the planning board? A second. Motion to appoint uh, Sally Retiria to the planning board. Motion by Mr. Reynolds, second by Mr. Craybacher. Mr. Mike Lowry. No. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. No. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. No. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Pass four to three. Okay, if we can go to the next person, please. Mr. Mayor. No, Bill had it. All right, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> make a motion to appoint Paul Mola to the Tax Board of Review. And do we do because there's two tax board and and also with that, uh, Sue Thompson as well. Second.
motion to appoint Paul Mola and Sue Thompson to the Tax Review Board. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I move to appoint Phil Baker, Steve Trustee, and Roland McIntosh to the VFFDF board. Volunteer firefighters, something, disability. Did we have a yes, second, Mr. Zambach? Yes, I did. You're right. Disability. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. I'm losing my voice. Mr. McIntyre? <laughs> yes. Mr. Zambach? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Shot Pass seven to zero. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, move to appoint Norm Coffin and Sharon Hyde to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. <coughs> Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Continuing under informational items, we had talked about this at our uh, last work session. Um, I would like to keep the discussion of budget cuts to two topics. Um, the main two are the deputies and the pool. The smaller items I think we can discuss at a future budget work session. Um, but I, because we've spent a lot of time in two different work sessions going over our thoughts on um, these two, I need to have a motion of council to give me direction on how we need to go with the shares contract and also with the budget. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Funny. This might be a good time. For yes, please. If you would, please. I was going to ask you. I understand that there was some concern raised in good faith um, at the last work session Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I just, oh. I just had a quick question before we get into the budget discussion. Should we should we let the public should we jump ahead and let the public talk about the, the you know all the boards now if necessary or should we wait till after the budget? That's normally mm -hmm. done under uh, comments from the public out oh. the city manager. Right. Report. Okay. I just didn't know if it should have been moved, but that's well, if there's a motion made, they're allowed to discuss, I would think, Lowell, after there's a motion made. That's why we have a law director to be able to help us do these things. The comments from the public are held during the comments from the public time. Okay. If you wanted to move your comments from the public time, hear from the public now. That's up to me. In the interest of hearing from your citizens, I don't think that there is a problem with taking an agenda order and taking an agenda item out of order. And so if you'd like to do that, you can do that. I'm going to ask council what what is uh, your what would you like to do? Would you like to let the I'm, public speak? Can I ask her a question? Sure. In the past, now I don't know right, wrong, or different. Okay, but I think it's right. There would be a motion made. Okay, council discusses, 
And I think at that time, before the vote, cannot the public offer opinion during that time? From everything I've read, that's okay. Was that's, that just on legislation in the past, or was that for any motion? I, it's been done during legislation. Well, it's been done both ways. I know. I used to ask all the time, and it was, you know, because I feel it's their duty to put input if we have legislation. Right. That's all I was getting at, I was wanting them to have a chance before we actually voted on it. Exactly. That's all I was trying to get at. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. I move that we change the order of the agenda to allow public comment at this moment. Second. Need a motion to suspend the rules of council. Mm -hmm. So moved. I said. So moved. It was close. It was close. It was real close. I understood what you said. You heard it. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank are down there. Any discussion, Mayor? Any discussion with anyone? No. Would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craven? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mr. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Uh, my wish is regular, yes. Mr. Reynolds? <laughs> yes. So the motion to suspend the rules of council passed 7 to 0. All right, at this time, comments from the members of the public. Is there someone who'd like to speak? I will. Go to the podium, please. Know your name and your address. <clears throat> Valerie Herdman, B-A-L-E-R-I-E, -E, last name Herdman, H-E-R-D-M-A-N. I live at 200 North Pike Street here in New Carlisle. I am also the city manager of the city pool. So um, I'm here tonight. You all have heard me multiple times. I'm here to speak on behalf of our children in our community. They are not able to come to speak to this because they aren't here. I am here for them. They are um, entitled to a service to our community, as I put it in some of your words from another past meeting. Our pool is a service to our community. Are we there to make money? That would be really nice. Can we control the weather? No, we cannot. The weather plays a big part, whether or not our pool makes money. I brought forth several ideas in front of all of you tonight on ways that I would like to see incorporated into the pool if it is in fact open this year. Um, for instance, uniforms are bought by employees. We need to open and close and adjust the hours of the pool. Um, we need to adjust the hours for the weekend. We can turn back our boiler from 80 degrees to 75. We can um, look at membership rates increasing, um, not only for our citizens, but also our daily gate for our residents and also our non-residents. We have lots of people visiting our pool from outside of our, our city. So those were just several of the opportunities and suggestions that was brought in front of me. Um, I know as a citizen, voters voted down a increase of a tax levy for our police. They voted that down. To me as a voting citizen, it is, say, it is stating to me that they're not concerned about the police. Clark County will come at my door if I say I have a robber, whether it's 1 in the morning, 11 in the morning, and we have deputies on, Clark County sheriffs are still going to show up. It was not put on the ballot that if this levy fails, the pool will be closed. I wonder how the levy or the voting would have turned out if that was put on there. We put it on there for police, not to close our pool. I understand we have to make budget cuts, and I understand the pool spends a lot of money. But we are service to our community. If we close the pool, what else do our children in our community have to do? They walk, they ride bikes, 
They're there before I open my door, and I'm chasing them out when I close my door. They live at our pool. I have to come to local schools already asking to come in for their 6th, 7th, and 8th grade days. The summer school brings their student in. We have swimming lessons. We have birthday parties down there. We have public pool parties down there that and brings this community together. All I ask for you, on behalf of the children in our community that I see come through our gates, please think about what are these children going to do this summer if we close that pool. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Herman. Appreciate it. Very well spoken. Anyone else? Okay, would you run to the podium, please? Named Ronald Cobb, 202 Bill and Drive. This pool is not making any money. You want a city income tax of half a cent so you can keep the sheriff here. You're wasting money. The citizens are tired of the waste in this city government. What she says is fine. How many years have it been since that pool made any money? Two, two or three. Pardon? Two. It's been two years since it made money. What did you lose this year or last year in the? In the a lot. A lot. Total. I'm not mistaken. Was it something like forty thousand, forty-five thousand? No. It's in the forties. <clears throat> it's in that area, yes, sir. Yes, sir, in that area. You want to keep throwing money away? You want a half percent income tax? Stop the waste in this government. Because if you're not going to stop the waste, I will fight you at the border. You know, this is ridiculous. We keep throwing money away. And you want stuff in this city, but nobody wants to eliminate something. If the kids want to pull, there's one south of town. There's Tip City. There's Huber Heights. There's Springfield. It, enough's enough. Let's quit throwing money away. You were elected to represent the city and save the city money and, and, and make things go. If you can't do it, then you need to resign. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Anyone else? Like to speak to see. Okay, thank you. It's, uh, comments from the public is closed now. <clears throat> so now we go forward with uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sir. I'd like to make a motion. Yes. Sir. City of New Carlisle does away with two deputies. Do we have to go back into our regular? Yeah, we should. No, we didn't. No. No. Mr. Collier, would you, when you get ready there, would you let people know on what was actually just said? I have a motion to eliminate two deputies by Council Member Rick Lowry. The second was by Mr. Zambaugh. So to let everyone know, we actually had four deputies. One has already left. So you're saying you would like to keep two on, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, thank you. Just to qualify what you're saying. Just give me a minute. I said eliminate two. Yes. Okay. Any, any discussion, please? Yes. I'd like to give my reasoning if that's okay. Okay. As I said before, this was thought out long and hard on my part. I can't speak for everybody else on council. But from day one, I have always said that if we listen to the people, They'll tell us what to do. And I feel that was done. It was put out there. There was a lot of effort put into it that we needed money to keep four deputies in town. It was overwhelmingly defeated. The only way I can look at that is that the citizens of this community said we don't need four deputies. We only want to pay for two. After that happened, I still had a few reservations, but I sat here a week ago and looked over there to Mr. Gene Kelly. And he told everyone in this room and everyone sitting out there 
that we could do just as well with two deputies. He said if there is a dog barking or a cat meowing or something minor, that they may take some time to get there. But if it's an emergency, they will be there. He said something about CVS right in downtown, how nice downtown looks, and that the Clark County deputy will do everything he can. Clark County Sheriff's Department will do everything they can to keep New Carlisle safe. I believe, Mr. Kelly, I wish he would have come forward four, five, or six years ago and said, you're paying too much, you can get by with two deputies. He said it, I didn't. And I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to listen to the people first, what they told us in their voting, and listen to him. He says we can do away with, we can eliminate two deputies and do quite fine. And I think that's what we need to do. And that's why I made the motion. Thank you, sir. All right, anyone else? Yes, sir, Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you for your comments. I understand this is this is a tough situation to be in, and it's, it's tough for everyone deciding on a vote like this. Um, when when the sheriff was here last week, and the proposal came up, and, and the proposal we'll talk about now is cutting the two deputies, not the 50-50 split. So I'll focus on that. I asked him if if we did that, would we see an increase in crime, or would we see the potential for an increase in crime? Because certainly four people can do more than two people. It just makes common sense. And he did say, well, you have if a dog's barking or the neighbor's music's too loud, we may not be able to make it out. But if there's a major crime, we're going to be there. And I understand that if it was a major crime, you're going to have someone there. But at the same time, if we have fewer deputies, it, it would let people know that this would be an OK place. You'd be less likely to, to get in trouble if you were to come here and, and do your bad guy stuff. And, because the cops aren't around. Maybe they're in the neighborhood, but they're not here patrolling the streets. And when I asked him if that was an issue, I didn't get the type of answer that I wanted. And in thinking about this, I, I've had people contact me and say, my car got broken into. Somebody was going through my car. Somebody was taking things. And we've all heard these stories. And that's a small crime, let alone the fact that, um, what was that, last year, we had some neo-Nazi heroin dealers that got busted in our town. That's pretty scary. And so I'm thinking, if we cut these deputies and someone's car gets broken into, maybe it would have happened regardless. But it's going to come back and say, my car would not, got a broken in, not have been broken into if the deputies weren't cut. If we had a deputy patrolling the streets, this guy or whoever was breaking my car would have left town would have gone somewhere else. And it's just a hard sell for me to be able to go with that. And I know that we've, we've looked at other options. Um, some of the stuff I brought to you either wasn't feasible, whether it be with, with the charter or with employee contracts, stuff that wasn't going to work out. And um, we're looking at issues with the pool. We've got a great list here. Um, I think we should look into that and see how much money some of these ideas are going to save us before we talk about cutting deputies. And when it comes down to it, I had four years or three years where I could have tried to find a solution to this, and I didn't find a solution. So it's on my shoulders as much as everyone else's. And anyone up here who wants to cut the police officers, I want you to know that they're not being malicious. Um, they're doing what they, they feel is best for the city. Um, in the Yalta conference with Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt, uh, the Western Allies left and, and ended up turning into the Eastern Bloc and giving it over to East Europe to communism. And they said it wasn't, it wasn't ideal, but it was the best we could do. And I know everyone up here is coming with that idea. It's the best that we can do. I just don't feel comfortable with this solution. And I didn't feel comfortable with the responses I got uh, from Sheriff Kelly. And I would like us to look at, try to look at different routes to saving police officers for this town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Zambo. We need to save significant amounts of money. Shutting the pool down, for example, would save some. It might save 40. It might save 15. Eliminating two deputies are going to save $190,000. That is significant. $20,000, if it was in my pocket, would be significant. But compared to a $5 million budget, it is really not significant. Uh, I do not feel that at this time, if we cut two deputies, that's, that's enough savings for now. We should keep the pool open. 
one more year if we've got two deputies. Because partly, this is an experiment. Is it going to work or not? If it works fine, we're cutting the two deputies, we can stop there. If it doesn't work out properly, we can make changes. We can make changes in three months, six months, a year, or two years. We have to pay attention to what's going on. We got to go back to more deputies from two. We've got to find $200,000 if we go past some place. Uh, we've got ongoing expenses that will be coming up that are not even considered in our current budgets. We have to put some money back. And I think the first thing to do is get our budget in line, get a big chunk out of it. And I agree with Mr. Wallace. The sheriff reassured me in my way of thinking that we would give up a little, but we wouldn't give up a lot. And to address your specific concern, I understand what you were saying. The fact that we had four deputies, perhaps even five, I'm not sure which, uh, not one of the was locked on our property, it was broken into. So the extra deputies didn't keep those people out. Only had they been parked in my side of the way that work. And we could have a hundred deputies, and that's probably going to happen. So I know what you're saying, but it doesn't necessarily all the way through. So I, I think that my opinion is we go with a big chunk of savings and we pay very close attention and keep monitoring how well it's working, not as savings, but how well it's functioning for just the two and the sheriff act on. Also the sheriff mentioned that prior to the, on average last year about two thirds of the calls that were answered by deputies were answered by county deputies, not state deputies. So that says a lot. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? He's higher than I, he's higher than I am. Do what? Yeah, I was, did you, was you going to get, we'll move it down. That's how I figured I'd move it for you. Yeah. Uh, Valerie had said a lot that I've said in the past, and, you know, I agree. Uh, the pool costs money, but I believe we need to keep it just for all the reasons she mentioned. And most importantly, and I've said it numerous times, is we said police. We didn't say police. And if so, we're cutting the pool, this, this, and this. So when you cut that pool, you're going to have a hard time getting it passed because you're going to have all the people that did vote yes for this thing are going to turn and rebel because you took away something that you didn't say you were going to. Um, it's, it's almost a no-win situation, but, you know, I said we stick to our guns, to what we said we were cutting. And I like and I like what you'd said, Dick, that this is kind of an experiment type thing. And and I and I also agree that if if this doesn't pass in May, then we go come back in November and we say, okay, now it's it's really down to crunch time. We need the police, and if not, the pool's going to go. Um, you know, whatever else services that could be cut. Um, I will argue that, um, Mr. Cobb, that you say excessive spending. I, I understand what you're saying with the pool, and it is. It's a, it's a big old funnel with money, money going through it. But at the same time, I don't see people coming up here saying, what about the money you have saved or you have cut? I mean, look at our roads. We don't pay them because we can't afford to, and you know, we're not going to waste money and, and going into debt to repo, repave a road. That we can. I mean, we could probably go out and get some bonds and repave some roads, but then we're wasting money again. Uh, we've got people that uh, in the uh, water department were understaffed by one or two members there. We're cutting costs there. We don't see our city workers driving around in flashy new four by fours with uh, new equipment. They, you know, they got old dirty shovels we've had since you know God knows when. Uh, so I, I think it's unfair to say that we're wasting money left and right. I mean, there are some places that that, that are a little bit of a waste of money. For example, the pool or. Um, you know, maybe the bus, some people feel about the bus, but I also think that New Colorado has tightened its belts very well, and I think people need to, to keep that in mind. Uh, Kim does a great job of going after grants that save us, uh, you know, 60% on, on a job. You know, you, you get a street that takes 100% funds and it gets covered by 80 or 60% grant, and then we only have to put in 20 or 30. So, I mean, we, we save as much as we can, but uh, to, to cut the pool, I think, is is really gonna is gonna bite us, and I don't think it's fair to do so. 
this time around. I'm, I agree 100% next year, if, if things don't look our way, then sure, let's, let's button up the pool and, and call it a day. But I don't think it's fair to the people who aren't old enough to vote for it, and um, that's just how I feel. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Uh, Colleen, before we even talk about the budget, how much would we have to even put in the budget to open the to, if the pool was there, it was twenty some thousand dollars, isn't it? We, we, we would we would trans we would have to transfer that on over from Joe. We've already transferred everything at the end of this year to get it back to zero. So we would starting out 2015 with no negatives like we did in 2014, which was a carryover from 2013. So you're basically at a clean slate. However, that sixty thousand was from the general fund. Now the general fund is hurting. It is out of money and it is one of the expenditures of the many expenditures that we spend in the general fund. So we are looking to get some replacement to help cover. Yeah. Um, there's other issues too and there's things that the manager is working on and we have been cutting expenditures. But you would start out with a clean slate but as uh, history and weather has shown the last three years, it's, it could be a $20,000 loss, it could be a sixty. dollars So okay. it, it's not, the odds aren't with it that it's going to be. Okay, then how do, you, how do you come up with a figure of $90,000 for their budget? Just, just don't, don't have to look, just off the top of your head. $90,000? Yeah, for the pool budget, yes. I, I'm, I'm heading to some place here, so. But, but well, it started off with ninety-four thousand dollars last year. It was the budget for the pool last year, ninety-four thousand. Yes. That's that's to cover the transfers. That, no, no. The, okay, then I need the, to look at my sheet. Yeah, the budget was ninety-four thousand dollars for the for the pool. Are you sure that wasn't to include the transfer we had no. to do in January? That's what it was. I think it was, it was, it was, it was with transfer, John. It was including fifty-one thousand dollars transfer. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Make it ninety. Well, it was 94 was what was in the budget. I know that John's referring to. The, the pool actually brought in 40000 on its own. And the transfer of 51000 was to cover, the, was to bring in enough revenue to cover the expenditures. On the revenue side, yeah. to make it, to make it look like, but that's not what, what was on the budget. The budget was ninety-some thousand dollars before. It included but it was not revenue. Anyway, okay. Anyway, you know, um, like I told Valerie earlier, well, when I came here 20 years ago, the pool was a big thing for our family. And we stayed there, you know, we stayed there for a long time. You know, we kept our kids, six boys, you know, kept them occupied. I understand the importance of the pool. You know, however, you know, um, you know, if I could see some movement on, you know, how can we, you know, you know Keep it open for three months and and earn you know it pay for itself because it's supposed to be an enterprise. It's just like the water department, wastewater, and whatever. It's supposed to make money, you know, in a business sense. You know, doesn't. Um, like I said in the work session, as far as the sheriff, you know, we have three deputies now. You know, to me that's a great compromise the three deputies. But however, I do know about you know. Uh, maybe after the May election, you know, if it, if we can get get the um, get the votes that we need, you know, maybe we can put the other ones on, you know. So I'm uh, now. I remember when we had six deputies. Now I remember when we had four deputies. My car still get broken in with six deputies, you know, and it got broken in with four deputies. So then we went down to two deputies. My house got broken in. And I had six. I had six deputies sitting outside. So it, I can't see the correlation of, of crime versus deputies, not in New Carlisle. I just don't see that. So just to tell you, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd be for the two deputies, you know, you know at this time. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, if I may, I'd like to read something and then continue on if you would. Uh, this is um, in the paper, this was in a few days ago about Franklin Township. Trustees laid off four police officers. Franklin Township trustees facing major financial problems said they must lay off four police officers, which is half of the force. So we're not the only entity in the Miami Valley that's having problems. 
we've been shown we need to come up with between $200,000 and $250,000 to lower our budget down. And that's what we're looking to do. Um, at this time, I would be for two deputies. Uh, I would like to relook the pool at this point also. I uh, tend to go along with uh, Mr. Lowry on the pool at this, at this time. If it doesn't pass in May, then we need to relook it and possibly see what we would do then in the previous, the next year. So I'm finished. You have something you'd like to say? Yes. yes. And I got to Well, I am absolutely opposed to going down from, from what we have three now to two. I mean, I think it's Sheriff Kelly even said, you know, uh, they'll, they'll be here, but how long does it take? Have you looked at the district? Has anyone looked at the districts that those county parks cover from Mad River all the way to White? That's a, quite a bit of distance. I, I think that we have Channel 7 here in Springfield paper and Newport Island News and all writing that we're cutting our deputies in half, and people are going to read this and see them on television, and they're going to think it's open season in New Carlisle. They're going to come out here, they're going to sell their drugs, break into our cars, do adverse things. But the message we're sending is don't worry, you can take, take a dip in the city pool after that in the summer it's still going to be open while our cars are being broken into. I think that this is the wrong way to put it. I'm definitely see I'm in the minority. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Mayor? Yes. Can I just have a problem? Yes, please. Before you vote. No, go ahead. I would just uh, like to. Well, you, you want that mic? I'm, pro I'm probably loud enough. Yeah. <laughs> I've been told I'm loud enough. <laughs> I would just respectfully like to ask you to think about what we've talked about in the last two work sessions and tonight. Um, crunch time is now. It's not put it off in another year. That's what's happened and why we are where we are now. We have always said, well, we'll put that off till later. We'll put that off till later. Even just cutting the two deputies is a band-aid. We still are not progressing. We're just barely making it, even if, I don't even know for sure we will make it with just the two, cutting the two deputies and no other cuts. We have looked everywhere for cuts. We're talking about employees or temporary uh, summer seasonal health. Um, this has not just been a month process this has been going on for years and years and years and I ask you politely to please consider not putting this off until the fall or until wait to see if it passes in the May and then we'll go again in November. We we voted in November and it failed in November and we told them we were going to make cuts. Yes we said the money was going to go to police and at that time to streets. But we said if it doesn't pass there has to be cuts because this is our general fund. And that's what is hurting is the general fund, the pools out of the general fund, the cemetery, when we had to put extra money into that. So I'm just asking you to remember this is not something that just has happened. It's not something that we can put off any longer. It needs to be done. Thank you. Yes. Kim, I just, I've said it once. I just want to make sure that I've said it clearly. And if anybody remembers when Tecumseh was going after their, after their levies year after year, and, you know, I know they need it just as much as we need ours. But when they got rid of blessing, I mean, you saw, you saw social media light up when they pulled the buses, saying they're they're trying to, you know, they're trying to, to lever us into, you know, into voting for this levy by taking our buses away, and that made people rebel even more. And I'm not saying that if we close the poor day, that's why we'd be doing it, but that's how the average person that doesn't come to these meetings, that doesn't understand what's going on, is going to take it. And I think that, you know. We said at the last at the last few meetings that our, our signs were a little confusing. I was looking at one at the house the other day. The cop car was this big, and it said, you know, protect our streets or save our streets or something of that nature. Yeah, you know. So I, I just you know until it's put out very clearly that the pool is going to go. I, I still you know, and not that I don't agree that it's not a waste. I do, but you're going to do more harm than good by doing it now than in next year. You will have two people, sets of people mad at you. The people that think we're wasting money, and then you're going to have the people who said you took our pool. Now we're definitely not going to give you our vote for the police. Well, that's just my opinion. I don't think so. Anyone else? Council? Okay. Can we uh, we need to vote on this now, correct? To what you'd like to do? So what are we voting on? Well, the, the motion, you want to read the motion again, please? Yes, uh, 
Motion to eliminate two deputies by Councilmember Rick Lowry, second by Councilmember Mr. Zambach. So at this time, we're only voting on the deputies, is that correct? Correct. Mr. Mayor, want to understand that? Yes, sir. That's assuming everybody knows that we started with four deputies. I think it should be clarified that we are reducing our force to two deputies. Right. Retention of two. Right. The second question. In our ordinance is coming in February, we're continuing the contract for three. So would that ordinance die from walking motion at the next meeting in nope. February? Nope. No. Because it was uh, ordinance five. That's the one you're voting on tonight. No, that's what I said. But, sorry. Today. But my question is, would, if we continue the extension, would it be with two? No. We will have a new contract to continue probably another 30 days, and it would be for whatever we decide tonight. All right. Just to make sure. That's just an extension of last contract. The current one until exactly. they get to the uh, yeah. negotiation. Okay, anyone else? Anything? Mr. Collier, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I think, yes. I think that we just should read get the motion clear as it was stated to ensure that we that it's very clear that we're reducing from four deputies to two, two. deputies. Thank you. Mr. Collier, would you read that one more time, please? The motion I have originally was motion to eliminate two deputies. Right. That's the motion. That's the motion right. I had. And we have four, was, which will lead to included in that motion to reduce from four to two. Right. Should we revise it to, Mr. Zambal, would you like to revise your motion to read his well, it, it, has to be him. it was my motion. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. Okay, I will make the most, make a motion that under the new contract with the Clark County Sheriff, we contract for two deputies instead of four. Okay. Now, should I put a date in there that that's okay? Here, give me a few minutes here. Motion under the new contract. Under New Carlisle's new contract with Clark County Sheriff. Go ahead. That we contract for two deputies instead of four. No problem. When you're ready, Mr. Collier, if you would read it one more time. Right. He's still writing. a second? He's still writing. Yes, Mr. Zambo. Yes. Yes. Let's try this again. I have a motion under the new contract with the Clark County Sheriff's Department that the city contract for the city contract be for two deputies instead of four by Mr. Lowry, second by Mr. Zambo. Okay. okay, any comments? One more time. Okay, would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds? No. Yeah. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Unfortunately, we have to, yes. Mr. McIntyre. I just want to say that everyone up here cares about the city. They're doing what they feel is best for the city, and you know, they might be right, but with that, I have to vote no. Mr. Zambach. As did the mayor, I reluctantly vote yes. Motion passes five to two. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make some comments about the swimming pool, please. And we'd like to make a motion as well, and I'll save the motion for last, okay? All right. Okay. Ahead. Name, sir? Mr. Cobb? Is the name Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir. Okay. Am I allowed to speak directly to him? I'll just speak in general, okay? That's, okay. You're fine. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, comments to you. But the public can hear me. There were some comments made that officials in New Carlisle have wasted money. I highly disagree. Uh, was there money lost on the pool? Absolutely. Was it a waste? Absolutely not. And if you think that's a waste, then maybe we should quit plowing the streets 
salting the streets and repairing the streets because that is also a service. So maybe we should do away with them as well. Uh, you know, and, and same ball game. We're not making money on the pool, but as Valerie said, we can't let these kids hang out on the corners and do nothing all day long, okay? Is there room for improvement at the pool? Absolutely, and I mentioned that to you last week. And we have to do that. But I think at, we have to keep it open. I think we are obligated to keep the swim pool open, unless we sell it or give it away, okay? Which uh, I don't think we do because the city brought it from a private individual who couldn't afford to keep it going because I happened to be on council when that happened. And I saw some of his bills. Uh, so, uh, but you know, it's a service. Uh, the lemon, lemon brush pickup is a service. Salting the streets is a service. Plowing the streets is a service. Repairing the streets is a service that we make no money off of. There's a lot of things that happen in the city that we make no money off of. We don't make any money off the, off the deputies. Okay, I mean, I guess we get some court, court costs back, correct? Yes. Okay, uh, but I think it is imperative that we keep the pool, okay? Uh, room for improvement, absolutely. And, and I think we really need to look at that. I've talked to you, Val, uh, and you know, see what can happen there, see if we can do other things. I would be absolutely in favor of closing the skate park uh, that is nothing but a bed of sin down there. I mean, any night you drive by there, you see uh, cars parked in there. I've had police officers tell me that uh, there's some few things exchanged down there that shouldn't be exchanged. Let's close it down and see if maybe we can't do something there adjacent with the pool that we can make some money. Rent it out or do whatever, okay? But, um, you know, I say we need to keep the pool. Uh, to my son over here, I disagree with you. I will never again vote to put the tax back on the ballot. This is twice. Uh, this is not the Cumpsa High School. I'm not going to vote to put it back on for 11, 12, 14 times or whatever. Uh, I, the only reason I voted to do it the second time was because I did felt that it wasn't projected out there properly. As you said, the little police car this big around and it said help the streets, you know. And, and I think it could have been done better and that's no one's fault. We hadn't done it for a long time and the people worked hard at it and, and I'm not faulting them. It just could have been done better. It's called hindsight. Um, I could have got more involved than I didn't. And so I will never vote to do it again if and when the people want to tax, if it is voted down again, if they see that they want more than two deputies and decide they want to have more money in the city and pay for more deputies, they'll let us know. Just the same way they let us know they didn't want to pay for them now. They will be here and tell us. Uh, so with that being said, I will make a motion that we keep the pool open in 2015. Thank you. We can go into comments now. Correct? No, I'm sorry. I'm just, no. Do you have a comment? I do. I do. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this evening, we were handed a list of seven ideas, cost-saving ideas, about the pool. And going through them, they're very interesting. I thank you for putting these together. I was wondering if, um, and I know I won't add this as an addendum to to the motion, but could we investigate these and, and, and think about implementing them? Because I think this is something, we, no, is this something we can, they are implemented at this time? No, we have talked about oh, okay. this in the past. Okay, um, can we continue to do that? It would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I think this would be good because if, it, if the pool's a big issue, this looks like a way that we can streamline the process. But. Anyone else have the comments? Anyone? Okay, would you read the motion that we have, please? I have a motion to keep the pool open in 2015 by Council Member Lowry, Rick Lowry, second by Council Member Zanabach. Thank you, sir. Any comments? One more time. Would you call for the vote, please? Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybach. No. Mr. Mike Lowry. Real quick, this is, I just want people to know, this is probably the hardest vote I've ever had to make. Yes. 
Mayor McLaughlin. I go along with the same thing. It is a hard vote. It's something that we need for our children. I was going to vote no, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I'm hoping that this issue passes in May so we can uh, help the city do other things, not only the pool, but definitely other entities that we have going that we need to be able to uh, keep going for the city. So I'm going to vote uh, yes. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes. I also was going to vote no. Um, I am going to vote yes with this caveat. We got to get a lot better than losing the grant for the pool to be open in 2016. So, yeah. Motion passes five to two. Thank you. Continuing with the manager's report, in your packet is a monthly report from the uh, Clark County Fire and Health District. And also in your packet is a memo. Uh, we could do this every year. And I would like to designate um, Mr. Howard Kipko uh, as the active city manager for this year. Um, and I would let you know um, via email if I was going to be at extended absence rather than us have to do this each and every time I would be gone. I'd like, yes. like to make a motion uh, to make Howard Kitko the acting city manager when Kim Jones is not available. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mr. Aaron Lockman. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zanbach. Yes. Fast seven zero. Mr. Mayor, I have a question for city manager. Kim, any news, good or bad, of from Twin Creeks or Bell Manor Nursing Home? Yeah. No on either one. No on either one. Do you expect to hear any at any, any time? time? Okay. If you have a message in for the prosecutor, just get an update on the status. But we haven't heard on the that. properties? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and on Bell Manor, they did say what, that it could take two, two yeah, years? Yeah, we haven't broken ground yet, so right. I think they expect to bring it around this spring. And, and they said it could be two years, correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you much. And that's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Committee reports, any tonight? No committee reports. Resolutions. We do have one. Mr. Collier. Resolution 15-01R, public hearing in action tonight. A resolution directing the Clark County Board of Elections to, to include in the special, the special election in the city of New Carlisle on May 5, 2015, an additional tax levy on earned income for police expenses. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion to adopt resolution 15 01R. Uh, this is for the uh, This is step two of the process in order to get this on the ballot and uh, do the ordinance, which we did earlier. And then this resolution will both be turned into the board of elections yet this week. The deadline is uh, February 3rd. Thank you. Any uh, comments, Any questions, anything? Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. I'm going to say yes. But... Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. We need to, be, to let the citizens of New Carlisle tell us what they wish us to do, so by all means, yes. Mr. McIntyre. I want to deal with what the mayor said, yes. Mr. Zambach. Make no mistake this time. This is for the police department. Yes. Motion passes six to one. Thank you. When you're ready, if you go ahead and read the ordinances, please. They're all introduction tonight. Well, I got a stack of paperwork going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Ordinance 15-01, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 2215. An ordinance authorizing the city manager 
to enter into a contract extension with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for policing services for the city of New Carlisle. Ordinance 15 02. Ordinance 15 02. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 2215. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an addendum intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners regarding wastewater service. Ordinance 15 03, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 2215. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding, MOU, with the Board of Clark County Commissioners. Ordinance 15 04, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 2215. An ordinance amending section 1042, Appendix A of the codified ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding certain sewerage charges. Thank you, sir. Other business? Is there any other business tonight? Anyone? Mr. Lowry, would you like to say anything about trying to get new members for a Heritage of Flight? Would you like to ask if you need a Heritage of Flight? I'll give you a little levity tonight. Yes, uh, we're going to be uh, starting up our Heritage of Flight Festival meetings here probably right at the end of the month, maybe the first of February for the Heritage of Flight Festival. And uh, first off, I don't know if you mind if I do this, but I'm going to do it. Lowell has been on, Lowell has been on the uh, Heritage Flight Festival Committee since uh, its birth when it started here in uh, Smith Park 10 years ago. And Lowell stepped off of the, uh, the festival committee this year. Uh, and I want to, you know, I think, actually, I'd like everyone to give him a round of applause. He, he did 10 years of uh, <laughs> It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of heartache. And... Uh, we thank you for all your help. And if anybody would like to join the committee, we are all getting tired and we're getting more out. So if anybody would like to come in and help and keep this festival going uh, and grow it, uh, you know, shoot us a message on our uh, Facebook page on, uh, uh, was it, New Carlisle Heritage of Flight uh, Festival. And, uh, you know, we can shoot you the meeting times and all that good information. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any other business? Other business? Anyone? Anyone in the audience, anything? Anyone like to say anything before we finish it? Yes, sir. Well, you need to, yes, sir, you do. You need the podium and your name and address. Please. You're the birthday boy. We still like to hear from you. My name is Joe Herdman. I live at 200 North Pike Street. Uh, had my water meter replaced uh, yesterday. And they told me they'd be there between 4 and 6. He came in my house at 4.05. He left at 4.12. Easiest thing I've ever seen done. So if you're dreading the water meter thing, just call him. It was a good wall. I worried, and I had no reason to worry. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comment. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Would you go ahead, uh, Mr. Collier, and read it? About the joint government meeting, town hall meeting, so forth. Yes, other business. There will be a joint government meeting on Monday, January the 26th, 2015, at 6.30 p.m., and that will be at the Bethel Township Firehouse. And if uh, I may qualify that, that would be open to the public if people would like to come to that. Correct. In fact, all of our meetings are open to the public. Right. Thank you. Uh, the city will have a town hall meeting uh, Monday, February the 2nd. And that is scheduled to start at 7 p.m. and that will immediately follow the council meeting, which will start at 6.30 p.m. And as the mayor mentioned, that is definitely open to the public and we would express for a lot of people to be in attendance. <coughs> City offices will be closed on Monday, February 16th for President's Day. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Again, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, we're trying to do the best that we can possibly do. We have a budget shortfall that would put the city in jeopardy. We cannot do that. That's why we've been discussing everything this evening and why we've also put a half percent income tax on for the May ballot. So hopefully you will hear us, know that we're trying to do the best we can. We definitely are not wasting money. 
We wish to make this a safe place and a place that we all want to live. So please help us out. We'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, executive session, there's none tonight. And Mr. Zenbach, I would. Mr. Mayor, before I make the motion to adjourn, I would like to, as a citizen, thank you for your 10 years of work on the air. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Now I have to Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>